Hey everyone, I'm excited to be able to share with you a devotion for this week. Um, this week we are in the middle of Hebrews in our IBC 260 reading plan and um, Hebrews is an interesting book. It's, it's a little different than other letters that have been written in the New Testament. But one thing, we know that it was written to the Hebrews. And so uh, when that's the case, then you think, okay, it, it's not, it, we, have to, we have to be able to know, understand a little bit more about uh, who the Hebrews are and what, how they think in order to really understand what this is all about. And so whenever you read through Hebrews, there's going to be some things that you don't understand because they're Old Testament concepts and their priestly duties that they had, like sacrifices and, and other priestly duties. But and so we kind of need to do some background work to kind of learn more about that in order to pull some good things out of out of this text. But uh, this week we're going to be reading starting in Hebrews chapter four. And I kind of wanted to focus there today. And and so whenever you look at Hebrews chapter four, one of the, the most famous verses in all of Hebrews is verse 12. And I want to I want to read that real quick. It says, for the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double edged sword penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Okay, so so he's going over a lot here, but really I want you to think about this. Whenever he talks about this double-edged sword and he's penetrating our spirits and our souls and he's looking into us, like really think of it like a, I mean, the context of this is he's, he think of it like a surgeon as someone that has a scalpel in his hand, a really sharp scalpel and a heart surgeon is going in and he's, he's looking at the heart, opening up his, his himself and really digging in uh, to this person to see what's wrong and see what, what needs to be fixed. This is what the word of God does for us. And this is almost like the, the sword, the scalpel in the hands of our creator, God, our Lord. And so he's, he's, he's uh, digging in, he's exposing our hearts and our spirit, and he knows our motives. He knows why we do what we do. And, um, and he really leads us to think, okay, um, why do I do the things that I do? Like, what, what, is, what is truly my motive, my inner heart on why I do this? And so uh, he, and he, he knows whether it's pure motives or not. And whenever you look back at Isaiah chapter 1, uh, the Lord, he really just lays this out for his people. And I think this speaks to us. It speaks to me so greatly whenever I think of the reasons for why I do the things I do. But he says, he tells them, he says, stop bringing useless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. Your new moon Sabbaths are, are uh, new moons and Sabbaths and the calling of a solemn assemblies. I cannot stand iniquity with a festival. In verse 11, he says, what are all your sacrifices to me? Asked the Lord. I, I have had enough of your burnt offerings and rams and the fat of the well-fed cattle. And then down in verse 16, he says, wash yourselves, cleanse yourselves, remove your evil deeds from my, stop, from my sight. Stop doing evil. And basically he's saying, stop acting like you're living for me and all these good things that you're doing. Stop acting like you're living for me. Uh, while your hearts and the motives of your hearts are not pleasing to me. So first, get your heart right. But before you start trying to do all these things for the Lord's service and stuff, no, no, no. He said, first, get your heart right. Wash yourselves clean. Come to Jesus to his feet. Repent of your sins. And then from that, the fruits of that will be something of, that's pleasing to the Lord. It'll be an act of service that we'll be able to do for him with pure motives and a pure heart. Um, he really focuses on this throughout all of Hebrews, but, uh, but he's, he's really hitting it hard here. Um, and so really we, what this means to us is to start asking ourselves some really tough questions. Um, why is it that I do the things that I do for the Lord? Like, what is the true reason, the motive of my, of my heart? Is it really for his kingdom and his purposes or, or could it be for my kingdom and my purposes and my agenda that I have for my life? And so to really start letting him dig in and dig out anything that may not be pure and holy. And like Adam and Eve in the garden, we may be 
trying to hide our shame and our pride and our selfish ambition and all these other things. But like verse 13 says, we are all naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. He sees our heart. We can't hide anything from him. He sees the sins that we struggle with. And so why pretend like he can't? I think that's what he's trying to get across to here. Why are we pretending like he can't see us whenever he does? He is God. And so if we could just recognize that and repent and come to him, open towards him, saying, God, okay, here I am. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know, see if there's any anxious thoughts within me. And then lead me in the way everlasting. If that's our heart, the Lord can use someone like that. And so really good fruit will come from a good seed that is planted in a heart that is prepared and cultivated to be used by him. And so I hope these are thoughts that you can bring with you throughout the rest of this week. And um, as we continue to seek how we can live this life for the Lord in a world that desperately needs to see someone um, with, with pure motives living for the Lord. And so have a great week.